accordion sketchbooks. What are they all about? Why would you choose one over a regular sketchbook? And what are they actually like to use? Hi guys, Sarah here. I hope 2023 is treating you well. In today's video, I'm going to answer all those questions and more, plus show you what I painted in this accordion sketchbook by Etcher. I'll leave a link to Jackson's art in the description box below if you fancy picking one up for yourself. So if you've not seen or heard of them before, accordion or concertina sketchbooks are simply sketchbooks that are made with one long sheet of paper folded like an accordion instead of being bound traditionally. But why would you choose this type of sketchbook over a traditional one? Well, I bought this one back at the beginning of December 2022 after I'd had an idea. An idea to create one long continuous piece of art. Something that would flow from one page to the next. Something that this type of sketchbook lends itself to that traditional sketchbooks don't. This isn't something that I've ever tried before, but as you may know, I like a challenge. So I was excited to try something new and see if I could make my idea into a reality. There are a few different companies that make this type of sketchbook, but I went with Etcher as I know and love the quality of their regular or traditional sketchbooks. They contain 100% cotton paper, so are great for wet media, and are available with either hot pressed or cold pressed paper. I went for the cold pressed surface this time as I prefer it for watercolour, and I paid around £20 for this 5 by 8 inch size sketchbook. This sketchbook is a bit cheaper than a regular A5 etcher sketchbook, but there are less pages. However, you do get the flexibility to paint as wide a painting as you like, something that may appeal to plein air or landscape painters. But if this is you, don't go out and buy one just yet, as I'll be giving you a full list of pros and cons that I've compiled after actually using this sketchbook later on in the video. So make sure to watch to the end to find out what they are and if I'd buy one again. That said, my first impressions of this sketchbook were very good. I like the hard cover, the elastic closure and the fact that it's lightweight. And of course, there's nothing to stop you using it like a regular sketchbook if you want to. My idea, however, would take full advantage of the one long continuous page. It came to me when I heard the 12 Days of Christmas song on the radio. I thought, what if I could draw an illustration for each of the 12 days in that song? And to connect the illustrations, I could draw out the music notes across the length of the entire sketchbook. I knew it was going to be quite challenging as I'm not used to drawing in a more illustrative style, but I was excited to try it out. So after receiving the sketchbook, I began by planning out the layout. To help me with this, I made a mock-up of the sketchbook using printer paper, and I used it to test out some ideas and some thumbnail sketches before transferring my drawings into the accordion sketchbook. I also printed off the sheet music for the song to help me draw out the music. So here's what I did. This sketchbook did seem great in theory, but right from the start, I did encounter a few practical issues. So whilst I'm showing you the illustrations, I'm also going to share with you what those issues were and how I overcame them to make sure my continuous painting experience flowed as smoothly as possible. So the first problem I found was that the sketchbook didn't lay completely flat, which is a real problem if you're doing a continuous painting. The solution was pretty simple though, as I just needed to realign the front and back covers so that they were slightly overlapping. It's probably quite obvious, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. So once I'd figured that out, I was able to really enjoy painting this double page spread. I used watercolour for the words and gold acrylic ink for the music, but I'll list all my supplies down in the description box below. On this next page, I painted a little Christmas tree and incorporated the first line of the song on a red ribbon going around it. Underneath that, I painted the music and added the words using black fineliner. My original intention was to paint one illustration or page at a time, but after the first couple of drawings I changed my mind and ended up doing the music along the bottom of each page all in one go, and then worked two or more illustrations at once. My binder clips came in really useful here to keep the sketchbook pages secure and help my workflow. 
It helped to have had a plan before I started, and once the music was painted in, I could concentrate on the little illustrations. I'd wanted to keep these fairly simple, and I tried to connect each illustration by the use of similar colours throughout, and by repeating some of the elements in each drawing, like the red bows and the gold swirls. So after painting a partridge in a pear tree, it was on to the next page and two turtle doves. Here I painted a red ribbon in a heart shape between the two birds and used a swirl of my gold acrylic ink to connect this page to the three French hens I drew next. I really enjoyed designing this illustration and had fun coming up with ways I could simplify drawing the hens to give each one its own personality. Next, I painted the illustrations for four calling birds and five gold rings. With the pages opened out, you can see better how I tried to connect the illustrations. You can also see from a practical point of view how bouncy the paper is. It wasn't too much of a problem whilst I was working at my desk, and using binder clips did help to secure the pages at each end. But if you wanted to do a continuous painting whilst travelling, or painting plein air, I think you'd struggle a bit as you'd have unsecured pages in the middle. I suppose you just wouldn't paint more than two pages at a time, but if you're going to do that you may as well use a regular sketchbook. So if you have any ideas or ways around this, then please drop a comment in the box below. I played around with different design ideas and composition again for this one, which as someone who typically paints realistically was very challenging. I was worried that the resulting paintings would look very amateurish, but adding little mice to the five gold rings made it a lot more fun to paint. It's a bit hard to see the details here, so I'll give you some close-up footage at the end of the video. Moving on and sticking with animals again with six geese are laying and seven swans are swimming. I painted my six geese on hay bales and gave the goose at the top a red bow to continue the theme. I also added some greenery to add a bit more colour before moving on to the swans. As the numbers increased it became more difficult to fit the designs in. So for this one the seventh swan is a baby sitting on the back of another swan. I did actually mess up a bit on this page and ended up using gouache to cover up a mistake. And it dawned on me that there is no tearing a page out option with this sketchbook. You can, however, still cover things up or stick another page in, and that's what I did, and whilst I'm still not convinced, I think it looks okay. On to the next two illustrations, eight maids are milking and nine ladies dancing. I was feeling more comfortable with the sketchbook itself at this stage, but if I was struggling to fit seven swans on a page, I now had the dilemma of how to squeeze in eight maids and a cow on this one. I did toy with the idea of just painting one of each character from here on in, but it just didn't feel right. I also had to figure out how to actually draw believable little people. It took a while and a lot of practice sketches before I was confident enough to carry on. And this is partly why this video didn't get finished until now, as I was way out of my comfort zone. It was a learning curve, but an enjoyable one, and hopefully you'll agree that it was worth it in the end. I tried to keep a simple colour palette throughout these paintings as well, and continued to connect each illustration with gold swirls. For my ten lords are leaping, I decided to have them all leaping around a flame with coloured ribbons. I used one of those poseable wooden figures to try and accurately draw a variety of different poses, but it was pretty tricky, especially since there are so many of them, and the more characters I had to fit in, the smaller they had to be. And the smaller they were, the harder it was to paint in their facial features. I was also a bit unsure about using such bright colours for this one, but with the sketchbook spread out, I don't think it looks too out of place next to the others. Now to get round some of the size issues I had with my Leaping Lords, for the 11 Pipers piping I cheated a bit and drew one Human Piper and 10 Mice Pipers. I thought it would tie in with the illustration I'd done for 5 Gold Rings. 
and I really like how it turned out. I included lots of extra music notes, gold swells, and really enjoyed drawing the mice in lots of different positions. So for the last illustration on day 12, I had to come up with a way to draw 12 drummers drumming. And my inspiration for this idea came from a piece of wrapping paper. I thought it would be really fun to draw the drummers marching into a gift box, so that's what I did. There are eight drummers on the box itself and four drummers marching up into the gift box. But before I show you some close-up pictures and go through the sketchbook's pros and cons list as promised, let me show you one last illustration. To finish the sketchbook off, I deliberately left one page spare to pull all the paintings together. In this one, I painted a Christmas tree and made each of the illustrations into an ornament to hang on the tree. That way, I started this sketchbook with a tree and finished it with a now decorated tree. It was a really fun project, but would I buy this sketchbook again? Well, let's first go through my pros and cons list whilst I show you a few close-ups. Let's start with the pros. This sketchbook is extremely good quality. It's a nice size, has 100% cotton paper and has a nice sturdy hardback cover with an elastic closure. It's not a bad price too. It gives you the flexibility to use as a regular sketchbook or to paint wider paintings should you wish. And in my opinion, it does lend itself perfectly to fun projects or challenges. The paper is usable on both sides too, although there is a join on the reverse. Before I actually started painting in it, I imagined this sketchbook would lend itself to travelling with or using for plein air paintings. And that could still be true, but having used it, I can now see that that could be difficult unless you were armed with a means to clip it together to prevent unwanted unfoldings on location. I did find a way to overcome the issue of it not laying flat with a bit of realignment and the use of binder clips, but I still haven't come up with a way to secure the middle pages if you want to paint on more than two pages at a time. There was also the albeit minor issue of not feeling able to make a mistake and move on as you would be able to do in a regular sketchbook as it's all part of one bigger painting. You can't just cut out or stick pages together to cover up mistakes, but you can always paint over or stick in extra pages. So maybe that's just me being picky. Being one long continuous page, there is also not a pocket in the back like Etcher's regular sketchbooks, but it would look a bit odd at the end of a project. So with all things considered, would I buy another accordion sketchbook? Well, maybe not. But never say never, as who knows what idea or project might inspire me next. So what do you think? I'd love to know if you've ever tried this zigzag, accordion, concertina style sketchbook before and what you thought of it. Maybe you've got some ideas or solutions to the issues I faced, or maybe you've got an idea for the reverse of this sketchbook. Please drop me a comment in the box below. And before you go, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I really do appreciate all your support and do my best to answer as many comments as I can. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.